Five years ago, the Superman reboot took Men of Steel was released to stellar reviews and a huge box office success. Oh wait, that didn't happen. Instead, Men of Steel was banned by critics, some calling it an insult to the character of a Superman, and some just hating because it was cool to do it at the time. So the movie ended up end up performing, making only 668 million on a $225 million budget, which led to a Batman v Superman movie instead of a Superman sequel we all wanted. And when I say we, I mean me. Anyways, this movie for me had a fabricated backlash from people that even today would not admit they misjudged this movie because they are just too stubborn to admit the truth. So what do I mean by fabricated backlash? Well, from the title of the film, the reckless fight sequences and the infamous neck snap, all signs were there. Some just didn't want to see them. Also it later, but it was too late, they already told everyone how it was bad and admitting they bitch judged it could hurt their pride or something. Looking at you critics. Let's start with the title. This movie could have easily been called Superman or Superman Reborn or something like that but they went with Man of Steel. While some believe it was because of the success of the Dark Knight and that it was just a studio trying to make Superman into Batman by not putting his actual name on the title, I will have to disagree. If they were following the Dark Knight trilogy's formula, they would have started with the name Superman for brand recognition like Batman Begins did. You know why they didn't? Because I don't believe they were following the Dark Knight at all. They were just experimenting with the Superman character. Batman v Superman is a bit more complex and different because it actually compromises some of, Man of what Man of Steel accomplishes for me. But I'm not going to talk about Batman v Superman for obvious reasons. The reason they used the title Man of Steel was, for me at least, is a way to signify how this movie was not about Superman at all. It was even barely about Clark Kent. It was about Kal-El. The alien from outer space who's trying to figure out where he fits in all of this. Where did he come from? Where does he go from where he is? And Zack Snyder takes us in a journey with him. A journey full of self-doubts and challenges in terms of what kind of man Kal-El is or what kind of man he wants to be. See, this is why I love the ending of Man of Steel so much. For me, it illustrates perfectly the birth of Superman and Clark Kent. He saved the day, now he knows what he wants to do with all that power. He found a job as a normal reporter to keep his humanity alive as well, but while still keeping an eye on the city. At the end of, the, uh, at the end of Man of Steel, the entire Superman universe is born. I just wish they could have fleshed it up even more in a sequel. They didn't need Batman to make a successful Superman movie. But here we are. So whatever. Then come the complaints about Superman causing destruction or whatever. And not helping people. It's his first day on the job. Give him a break. Have you read the death of Superman? He am, uh, am Doomsday destroys cities while fighting. If he held back against Zod, he would have died, and he knew it. Zod was a, was, a was a trained soldier. The only advantage Clark had was that he had a better control over his powers over Zod. He had to fully use them. Even if you watch the new Death of Superman animated movie, you will see how much destruction Superman causes. This is not the 70s anymore where four aliens fight and all they destroy is a brick wall, come on! This movie never claimed that Kalel was going to be mature, boy scout who knows everything, just like the title. The fight scene do not indicate it is Superman. It is just a guy trying to do the right thing. Then you have Zod's snap neck. Man, okay let me do this slowly. So the film starts. We see Kalel makes difficult choices, like letting his father die just so he couldn't expose himself. I don't particularly like that scene, by the way. They should have chosen a younger actor to play a younger Clark for that decision to make more sense, as they were trying to imply that he was still a young adult and confused. Or whether, or, and when his father told him not to save him, he 
I trusted him like a kid and didn't act. However, when fighting is hard is older as the movie suggests, he has learned to make difficult decisions, but this time, he is facing a man who doesn't only threaten him, but also the people he cares about. A man who couldn't have been reasoned with. In a world with no kryptonite, and a man who is quite not Superman yet, Zack Snyder decides to put Kalel in a difficult situation. For the first time in the entire movie, it wasn't about protecting his secrets or protecting his identity anymore. It became much more. For the first time, he understood he had the fate of the humanity in his hands. And only he could do something to save everyone. And as painful as it was, it snapped Zod's neck. Something that would probably haunt him for the rest of his life. If the Superman today tells me he will never want to have to take someone's life ever again, I will believe him because unlike the usual perfect interpretation of the character we have been given several times, Man of Steel gives us a flawed man from outer space who is climbing his way up into becoming the symbol of hope we will know and respect. If you tell me you watch Man of Steel and not even once felt bad for this guy, who never asked for any of this, yet had the entire fate of the planet on his shoulders and got put in a situation where he, had, he literally had to take the life of one of his own kind, then maybe you just have a cold heart. Man of Steel is indeed a misjudged masterpiece, a movie where you shouldn't expect a fully matured Superman. It is showing us for the first time the baby steps of turning into Superman. It was a refreshing and a fascinating concept. We didn't time jump and saw him directly as the perfect guy, no. We saw his struggles, his flaws, and at the end of Man of Steel, it felt like he earned the title of Superman. So I've got a lot more content coming in the next few weeks. So if you like this, click on the subscribe button. I'm from I'm working on a new video on Steven Spielberg's most underrated movie, and another one about my little concern about a sequel to a little movie featuring a warrior princess. Hmm. See ya.